welcome to today's session i am satishri of ece department minakshi college of engineering i welcome the chief guest kera chaisa chairman thiru an radhakrishnan managing trustee thirumadi gomadi radhakrishnan principal dr r raja hod k prem kumar co convener r anand prabha and other department staffs students and all participants and also on behalf of management it's my pleasure to welcome prasanna of ariot solutions who helps in organizing this webinar initially let's start the session with a video of ariot solution is the workforce of the future. Technology is transforming the world of work beyond all recognition, creating groundbreaking opportunities. The future is the collaboration between the humans and these technologies. Technological revolution that is blurring the lines between the physical, digital and biological spheres. But it's also eroding the rights of workers. And jobs disappearing. But are these anxieties overblown? The future is about the collaboration between humans and these technologies. How we react to this brave new world of work today will shape societies for generations to come. in the field of IoT and augmented reality with relentless focus on the ever changing needs of industry and an equally strong commitment to meeting those needs we enable our clients to seize the current business needs and open up a new era of economic growth and competitiveness IoT INXT is a platform where industry experts deliver a spectrum of courses on industrial IoT, augmented reality and machine learning to enrich engineering graduates on latest technology to keep them in sync with industry requirements and prepare them for the industry. Yes, ma'am. I'm here. Yes. Hi, guys. Good afternoon, folks. 
Today we have with us an eminent person in the field of space technology. We have with us Kaira Kisa. She is a space PR and space technology transfer advisor, which means that she connects the people, the companies, the startup, and the institutions with the world of aerospace and with new space. She is also an expert in public relations, and her biggest passion is the space. On her back, she has studies in foreign literature, communication, marketing, and business. She strongly believes in bonds amid people, with the purpose to follow her relentless research to make the planet sustainable for our species. She is not afraid to face new challenges by anticipating solutions and making possible the unpossible, impossible. Kiara is since the 2018 proud leader and organizer of the NASA Space Apps Challenge in Russia. Kiara was also selected to be a mentor. Model of Women and Ambassadors for the program Space for Women of the Office of the United Nations for the Space Affairs, UNOSA. Kaira is also one of the thousand unstoppable women that are changing Italy through innovation list by Startup Italia. We are truly honored to have you here, ma'am. We are hoping the audience today will make maximum benefit from this session. On to you, ma'am. Namaste, namaste. Thank you so much for inviting me. Sometimes when uh, when I hear uh, this uh, short bio, um, I think that it's not me, <laughs> and I, I sometimes uh, think that how how can this be possible? Is this really me? And so, um, okay, uh, I'm not making it possible the impossible. <laughs> um, anyway, so I, I'm really really happy to be with you today. And, and I hope uh, that uh, my speech will uh, somehow be useful to you. And so I, I can say that, uh, yes, um, I saw this, uh, this video that uh, you've been putting before my presentation. And I think that um, technology has to improve our lives. And sometimes I have I, I make myself the same question: Will uh, technology take uh, take uh, away from us jobs and then opportunities? Huh? Who knows? We 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 don't know it yet. We know that uh, we cannot live uh, without technology at the moment. We are uh, we are very very used to use technology every day in everything we we do. So and uh, and this seems to facilitate uh, everything we do. Um, and so um, I, I, I have to say that, yeah, uh, technology really also changed my life. Um, you know, I was uh, three years ago, I was uh, a single mother of two uh, and I was uh, unemployed and I was looking for something new and for a new path to explore. And my father really said to me, Chiara, you you have to leave uh, the dead sectors behind and and try to find something that uh, that is looking forward and uh, when you will be inside it you will be in the middle of of something new and so i i started to put likes <laughs> in facebook at the uh, technology pages and the futuristic pages and and i started to see uh, posts and articles about technology and uh, and the future and and also space, and so um, one day I saw this uh, this post that was uh, talking about uh, uh, NASA Space Up Challenge. Uh, it was um, I, I really didn't understand it at first because um, I, I did I never heard about space data. You know, also data was was something that. Uh, was really a little bit unusual for uh, for me to read, and uh, so I got interested in, and uh, I saw that uh, anyone could participate to this uh, challenge using space data and and save the world because many of the challenges uh, uh, were linked to addressing SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. So I was really, really curious, and uh, and I went there, and I participated, and um, um, it was fantastic. I, I really fell in love with this competition, and I I decided to to bring it to my hometown in Brescia. And so um, when I came back home, I started working 
on it. And I faced uh, many difficulties because I am not an engineer. So uh, when, uh, when I proposed uh, this, uh, this challenge to people, they, they asked me, well, you are not an engineer. And also my boyfriend said, oh, come on, Nessa will never, never uh, want to have anything to do with you because you're not an engineer. You, you can't. You can't make it. You can't do it. And instead, instead, I, I really wanted to do it. I really wanted to take this challenge to my city. So uh, I, I got helped from, uh, from, from some friends, and I organized it, and uh, we built a little community, and, and we, we did it. I, I could do it. So after Space Apps Challenge. I, I really started to get interested into space and uh, space conferences and workshops and webinars and also courses. And so uh, little by little, I got really involved and, and startups started to ask uh, me some help and uh, I started to help them and, uh, and then also companies. And so <laughs> here I am and also, um, there was this, uh, this opportunity for me to um, to be selected uh, as a woman uh, um, in in uh, in a space career, and uh, um, I subscribed, and uh, they selected me for for a space for women project uh, by UNOSA, and so here I am. I think maybe Mr. Air Lava Sel. Silvaraji wanted to ask something. No, okay. Oh, I I have eight new messages. Okay, and so um, so now I, I want to show you something. Uh, I will show you first uh, space apps. Um, uh, the space apps. Um, website <laughs> if i find the share screen here we are oh host disabled attendee sharing screen sharing i can't i can't share the screen anyway uh, space apps is a, is a hackathon that uh, takes place all over the world and uh, it's a huge community of uh, people from uh, uh, all over the world and for, and um, with people that are um, have different professionalities just like uh, like in the, in the space apps when when you when you form a team the the better thing to do is to have different uh, skills and abilities to to make a genius the solution so um, what is really fascinating is that um, anyone can participate so you will find uh, engineering with engineers, with uh, artists, or uh, you know teachers, or uh, um, people uh, passionate about space. So um, and and, the, and the, this mix is really important, not only in space apps challenge, but also in uh, uh, in for uh, for the space sector because now space sector is really on the rise, and and you can uh, you know it. And so there are many, many companies uh, now uh, growing and, uh, and asking for, uh, for different professionals. So um, what I want to say is that uh, it is really important uh, for, for all of you to understand that uh, the space sector needs you also if you are not an engineer or also if you are not, well, if you are an engineer and you study STEM um, and you study STEM, uh, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, you will be very, very advantaged. And, and this advantage will, will uh, give you the possibility to have uh, highly rewarding uh, jobs and high, with uh, high wages. So I, I really suggest you, <laughs> but uh, you don't need uh, my suggestion because you already study technology and engineering. So uh, it's a good job because uh, really, um, um, it's it's really a figure that is really really required. But um, but uh, also um, companies needs also uh, many other figures like uh, lawyers like. Uh, expert in finance like uh, 
uh, you know, um, all, all the figures that normally um, are hired for a normal company, they are needed also for the, for the space companies. Tiara, so, sorry for interrupting. Uh, do you mind to share the screen right now? Can you try? Now to I, I saw that. Okay. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay, so. So this is, this is, you, you see, can you see that um, we have uh, so many space apps challenge <laughs> in the world. This is last year map and here you can see, uh, I will let you see where I am. Brescia is here, this little point here. Next, this is Milan and this is Brescia. <laughs> so as you can see, and it's very, very interesting for me, um, this is where technology is happening. This is where um, sometimes you, you find also hubs and to, to, for, for startups to incubate and also to incubate um, space startups. And space startups um, are, are startups that are really, really um, interesting for investors. So as you can see, um, uh, also in India, we, we have so many space apps. And uh, the, the very nice thing is that I have to, can I, because uh, I see myself, but I want to see the screen. So echo, if you, if you go to challenges, for example, um, you will find very, very important resources. And these resources are platform free, free, platform for space data. For example, for this challenge, as you can see, we have a lot of, uh, of challenges and you can do like this. And when you go to challenges, echo, you have resources. So you will go to resources and here you will see um, wonderful resources from, from NASA or from uh, ESA. This is about the moon, but every challenge has uh, resources to, to solve the challenge. So it's very important if you, if you go and have a look. I will also share with you um, some resources uh, so you can uh, try and uh, subscribe to these uh, free platforms and see what it's all about. So this is, uh, this is for the space apps. And then I, I will show you uh another thing which is the program for space for women as i was talking about um, sorry it's a little bit messy my computer <laughs> so here we are and uh, as you can see now we have uh, here we have all the sustainable development goals um uh, of the united nations for 2030 and um, it's, it's very, really important uh, to have uh, quality education and gender equality because uh, addressing these two, these two um, goals, then you will achieve also other, other SDGs goals like uh, good health and well-being, zero hunger and no poverty and also uh, decent work and growth uh, in economy. So they, these two are, are really, really important because um, we, we have seen a decline of uh, women in, uh, in uh, STEM sector and also in space sector. So here you can see it that um, only around 30% of the world's STEM researchers are female. And then uh, most female really, unfortunately, uh, this, uh, uh, experience discrimination at work. And, uh, and uh, here we find, uh, you know, all over the world, uh, the percentage of women um, enrolled in the STEM-related higher education, it, it's, it's really, you can see it also in uh, developed countries, not, is not like uh, really, really high. So, um, we, we can improve it um, and also in space, you know, uh, when, I, when I was a teenager, uh, I thought that space was only, uh, but not only when I was a teenager, also some years ago, I, I thought that uh, 
working in the space sector meant to be an astronaut or or really or or a technician or or an expert in telecommunication but uh, i was wrong i mean uh, space is much more i mean you can uh, as I told you before, so it's important for people to understand it and to know that uh, uh, also women can have uh, a role in, in the space sector also without being astronauts. I mean, um, you see, so women CEO represent uh, 19 percent of the leaders in the aerospace and defense. And uh, I think that uh, this this data can be can be changed if if uh, we let girls see and understand that uh, it's possible there are other women doing it and uh, um, and doing it successfully so um, and uh, and if you study stem even more successful so <laughs> let's see as i was telling you uh, addressing that uh, uh, gender equality means also that uh, a woman can uh, um, take care of her family and uh, and uh, of her health, uh, um, so she can pay doctors and have better uh, nutrition for the children, and uh, also uh, reducing the gender gap bring uh, twelve trillion to the global GDP if it will be by. 2025 let's hope so <laughs> i really hope so so this this uh, this was a problem that i also uh, really experienced when i was uh, a teenager nobody came to my school saying hey uh, did you know that you can join space even if you are not an engineer or if you are an engineer uh, and um, it's not all about astronauts and I think that uh, this is this is the, the the real important focus of of this program uh, to let the girls see that uh, you can do it and uh, if you are um, very good at STEM then it would be much easier and uh, if you are not you can always enter like me <laughs> and. Um, so uh, it's uh, it's very nice if you want to have a mentor because uh, we are 35 and we also have an Indian uh, uh, mentor. Um, if you want, you you just go to to this uh, website and uh, you will see a space for women uh, mentors. You can write and you will see uh, all of the 35 mentors and you can ask um, for anyone you like to be a mentee so um you're welcome to ask and uh, we will help you and um, uh, guide you if you want and so this was uh, the share screening now i am trying to understand how to unshare it <laughs> i'm sorry i'm i'm terrible at the, at these things and uh, maybe i have to do like uh, okay here I found it. Echo. So, yeah, what uh, what I really really suggest is um, to think about these things and uh, um, understand that uh, uh, space is a very fast growing sector, and uh, uh, anyone can enter. And using space data is important to create also startups and uh, and this is very important okay so any question i cannot see how oh wow 88 thank you ma'am uh, namaste thank you so much thank you now uh, the participants can uh, ask a question to ma'am Yes. First, I'll call upon uh, Durga Prasad Stenadipadi, I think. You can, uh, you can uh, unmute yourself and you can uh, ask the question to ma'am. Durga Prasad. Yes, sir. Thirupugal, Milan. Hello. Hello, sir. Is... Sir, is it audible? Okay, ma'am. And there are uh, 
what happens when black holes collide? So as, as I told you before, um, I am not an astrophysicist. I am uh, uh, really keen of space for economic implications that uh, are, are possible with uh, space data and space technology. So I'm sorry, I, I, cannot, uh, I cannot answer uh, the question when black, when black holes collide because I am, not, uh, I am not an astrophysicist, so I, I, I really, I can't understand <laughs> for the question. So I can see here support to India, if possible, how to approach. And this question, I don't understand. Uh, uh, supporting India in, in, which, in which way? Hello, Kerana. Uh, I'm, I'm reading another question. Mm, so, there are uh, so, allora, most women in India are hesitant to venture into space technology and exploration as a career, even in such a modern age, due to the lack of legitimate exposure to it. Sure. What would you like to say to such women? Can you bust the myth? Well, um, yeah, of course. Uh, I have been also, you know, I've been in Florida last year and uh, I've been to Cape Canaveral. In Cape Canaveral, they were building a lot of things. There was Blue Origin, there was SpaceX, and, and many, many women uh, are involved. We have to look uh, also at America and see at the new space and private space sector are really really growing very fast and so and many many women are involved and uh, the only way we have to, to let girls see that uh, work in space is possible also for them is uh, is to let them see that somebody else did so i am here for this purpose to let girls see that uh, even if you're a woman uh, you, you can join the space sector and benefit from it so um, yeah this is this is the answer what are the advantages involving STEM? So if you study STEM, uh, for example, I saw the, um, SpaceX uh, uh, careers requests uh, and vacancies, and I saw that many, many electrical engineers, electronic engineers are really, really wanted. This is um, why uh, it's, uh, it's very important to get involved in STEM because uh, these, these studies really lead you um, to, to highly rewarding careers. And so I, I really um, encourage you to pursue a, a STEM, career, a STEM, STEM studies to enter the space sector. But as I told you before, uh, you can also enter the space sector if you are not a STEM student. Are STEM really important? Yes, STEM subjects are really important. If, uh, if, and it's much easier for you to enter the space sector. But if you are not uh, good at maths, like me, you can always enter with uh, another um, professional figure. Uh, like I was telling before, uh, um, space really, uh, really needs uh, uh, lawyers, needs uh, doctors, needs uh, uh, finance experts, marketing experts, <laughs> artists also, artists as are wanted, so uh, graphic designers, everything. I'm an electronic engineering. How should I approach to enter space sector? Well, um, I always uh, suggest to watch uh, um there are uh, three pol three portals one is careers in space and one is space individuals and so you you can see inside of those portals and and look for for a job and uh, when you look for this job you can see uh, the requirements then uh, if if you are an in electronic engineering there's no problem i mean they, they will hire you like this <laughs> Um, what are the various opportunities that startups have today in regard to collaboration? Uh, collaboration, I, I don't understand the question, but um, 
startups uh, are, are really important and uh, especially in uh, in the technology and the space sector so is a space apps a project prototype uh, uh, type of challenge so when you participate to the space apps you can also make a prototype but you have only 48 hours so um, many many times you have the project and you have to remind that this project is open source in order to participate and win the prizes um, um when you solve the challenge this challenge has to be solved with open source data but this doesn't mean that uh, you cannot uh, um, develop further your uh, project to make it a startup what do you think about nasa spacecraft and other nation spacecraft <laughs> well um I think that uh, nowadays uh, NASA relies on a private company to build uh, on two private companies to build a spacecraft. So uh, maybe this is the difference. I don't know if India has already started with um, involving private sector or uh, uh, or China or um, I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not uh, uh, a spacecraft. Uh, um, I know that uh, NASA has involved uh, SpaceX and Blue Origin for this. How about students of computer science engineering? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they are really wanted in space sector. Master in communication electronics. I think so. You just have to check also um, SpaceX uh, careers. You can check and see, and see all, uh, all the, the jobs uh, needed. What's your opinion about so space technologies becoming an academic subject in school? Oh, yes, this is a very good question. Um, for, you know, for a Space for Women pro, uh, pro program, any, any mentor has a project. And my project is to build a map, a worldwide map, uh, filled with data about courses and about uh, um, schools and about um, uh, universities that has courses that leads you to a space career so it's really really important for me um sp for space technologies uh, to become an academic subject it's really 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 uh, i would love i would love to to join uh, something like this and I, I would love to have it here in italy for for our students and um, we have aerospace engineering and so but uh, sometimes we don't have really specific courses where we can get qualified for stem like best place to study uh, and this is what we are trying to do and also my college colleague uh, from space for women network uh, Deepna Gandhi is um, is writing uh, the names of uh, of the universities that she suggests. So I hope that this map will be available soon for all of you. Um, yeah. What are the basic skill one will, should have to enter space sector? Well, um, the basic skills. Uh, is passion <laughs> if you are really passionate about it you will find a way but the the very important thing is is if you enter with stem uh, you you are really advantaged through space apps we are exposed to other space engineers to es explore opportunities yes it is um for example in my city i invited uh, uh, aerospace engineers and experts to help and mentor uh, all the participants. Uh, in statistics, uh, I think so, also statistics. Um, what does the mentoring cover for the Space Apps Challenge? So, for example, our mentors helped uh, find um, uh, tools of, to build uh, to build solutions and so maybe new software and uh, <clears throat> anything that the mentor can uh, can can do for help you know so uh, also space apps this year if uh, if the lockdown uh, uh, is uh, is not possible to you know if we will have a return of of covid we will be forced probably 
um, depends on the city to, to have it also virtual. There is also a virtual part of the space apps and the local part. And if it's not possible to have the local part, then the local part will go virtual. Um, how are project solutions submit? Well, you will have a, a page uh, to work on your project for the space apps and your team will be there and uh, you will submit the project on, on, that, on that page. So you will have to write the document there and also um, the, the repository resource and, and, uh, and uh, your project. Is any online platform available for STEM? Um, if you mean for STEM education, I think so. I, I usually uh, always watch Coursera, for example, that you can find many, many um, courses for free. Um, but I don't know. I, I, um, I think that, uh, yeah, there are platforms available. Yeah, 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 I think so. How long do teams typically want to work each day? What is the minimum age of participants? So um, it's up to you. I mean, uh, you have 48 hours and uh, you can uh, decide how much you want to work on it. And uh, usually participants um, uh, from age 13, they, uh, they they participate they can participate alone and uh, um, under 13 uh, they have to be accompanied um, or uh, helped uh, by uh, by an adult can you give an example of preview winners of space apps and what it was about so um space apps winners are uh, usually six teams so best global impact, um, best technology, uh, there are uh, categories. And uh, last year, for example, um, um, won uh, a team from Manila and this team was, uh, had uh, developed the solution for, uh, for dengue, for, to track dengue, for example. Another, another one was a challenge for, um, to, to clean oceans from, from plastic pollution. And also uh, a team won with, uh, with this uh, boat to collect plastic pollution from oceans. And things like this, you know, uh, Earth is, uh, is, uh, has many problems and we try to solve them. And space data are, are really helpful in this. Um, what are the rules of Van Allen belt in space? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know because I, again, I am not an expert. I am not an astrophysicist. I live uh, astrophysics to astrophysicist and physics to physicist. How does participant uh, registration work? So when, uh, when uh, space apps uh, um, registration opens, you, you just go to the website and you will have to register uh, and to make an account. So, and then, and then you will uh, choose the, the location you want to participate in. And it's, it's, it's really easy. And uh, you will get an email back that uh, says that you have uh, been subscribed. When will participant registrations open? Well, uh, now um, the the challenge, the space apps challenge, will be in October uh, from uh, from two to four October. So I think that uh, maybe in September, but I'm not sure. Maybe in September or or also August, but we we don't know it yet. Can I do academic projects related to astronomy or space using space apps, using mentors? Well, uh, yeah, you can, you can, Allora. The thing is this, that uh, in the space app challenge, you have challenges um, which are set and these challenges are the same all over the world, but you can also uh, submit uh, a project of yours uh, to to solve a solution to propose a solution for uh, something else. So it's it's called the free challenge, and yes, you can do it. <clears throat> um, and yes, why not? You can also use mentors, and then 
use this uh, this um, this solution uh, to present it to to your university. Why not? It's a good idea. Where will participants access the data of the challenges? Can you provide the details on how to develop space apps? Yeah, I, I showed you before. I don't know if uh, if you followed Satish Shari. Um, allora, so um, um, I will show you again. Uh, let me see. Uh, anyway, the resources are inside the challenge. Uh, and each challenge has specific resources. But now I, I will share with you, uh, let's say I have these resources, but then they will be really, really implemented. Um, because, uh, um, okay, here, because uh, um, each and every year, um, maybe, and each challenge is different. Sometimes NASA Space App Challenge is uh, with NASA data and ESA data. Sometimes it also has like a COVID challenge. It, it had um, space data uh, from JAXA. Um, so you will find uh, those data, those resources in each and every ch challenge, as I, as I showed you before. Um, what is the aspiring technology needed in space to enter this sector? Well, you can, you can use the space data for the downstream, so to create technology to use uh, on Earth, but you can also upstream, so you can use the space data and, and, um, and space patents to uh, create something that goes to space. And so, the aspiring technology needed for now is something to mine the moon is uh, there are so many <laughs> like also um, the most wanted is to spot the breeze and uh, uh, get rid of space debris as you know we have uh, earth is really really covered with the space debris of ancient um, of ancient uh, satellites um, that crashed uh, each other and and then formed this uh, all these debris and uh, this is really a treat for the ISS and also for other um, satellites. So it's important to um, create uh, technologies to uh, address this really really huge problem of space debris. I see, I see that uh, questions maybe are, are over. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you we so much. <laughs> thank you, thank you, ma'am. Uh, we had a wonderful question and answer discussion session. Uh, thank you for the participants who have raised such a wonderful questions to Kara Chesa, ma'am. So now, uh, at last, finally, we are going to conclude the session. So before concluding the session, I would like to uh, ask Ananda Prabhama, who is a co-convener of this session, uh, to, uh, to share a few words uh, about the session. Ananda Prabhama? Uh, yes, can you hear, hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, ma'am. Most welcome, welcome, ma'am. Namaste. namaste, namaste, ma'am. On behalf of my, uh, the management, and Hachodi sir, uh, really very uh, thankful to you for this wonderful session. It's very interactive session and uh, hope all the students, uh, the, all the participants uh, now uh, make aware of uh, how to join in NASA and uh, how to use that uh, space up challenge. Uh, and uh, for uh, like this from India, you can uh, few days in the coming hello yes thank yes, you yes. yeah 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 well, so thank you thank you for your uh, very informative session once again thank you ma'am thank you very much Oh, thank you so much for having me here and I'm so happy that uh, you will get in, involved in space apps and I am I'm absolutely here if you need my help 
and uh, I, I will be very, very happy if you will join the Space Apps community. Sure, 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 sure. It's very encouraging for women. Uh, yeah. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Namaste. Uh, is namaste. it right? Namaste or namaste? Namaste, namaste. <laughs> namaste, namaste. <laughs> namaste. Thank you so much. And thank you uh, for uh, for having me here. Um, I don't know what is the feedback link. I, I don't know the feedback link. Maybe. Um, that is for the participants, Kiara, yeah. for this particular session. That's for the participants. <laughs> I don't know. Echo. Maybe they wanted this one. Okay, so I can leave. Thank you. Yeah, Mark. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ma'am.